Well, welcome back. This is Barney Hops. I'm George, and we're gonna go through the Saddleman's Cut. Yep, we've we've done all of this, and you know we just did the fermentation chamber, so it, it's it's that time. Now I've got my uh, my cook pot, my stock pot, and this is actually the base for another version of the still that I have laying around. But I use this a lot of times for cooking when I cook grains because I can control the temperature in here. What I've done is I've built, you can see inside here, I've built a, a false bottom. And what that false bottom allows me to do is to cook the grains in here without them laying on the base on the bottom here and cooking in and scorching. That's what it's for. So, and I made this in two pieces. So I've got that piece and I'll place this piece in there and that's the other half of it. And then I'll fill it, uh, and this just lays in there, and that will maintain, that will keep that bed of grain off of the bottom of this cooker uh, so that it will not scorch. So let me get this full, uh, then we're going to heat it up, and then we're going to add our grains, we're gonna, we'll talk about that briefly, and then we'll get right into it. Okay, we're whipping along here now, we're at like 151 degrees. So what, what temperature are we looking for? I, I've often said, get it to 165 and shut it off. Because uh, what's going to happen? I know that once I add my corn, I've got my five pounds of flake corn, and I'll add that slowly so that it starts to rehydrolize because it's already gelatinized. Um, it, it's going to drop that temperature. We're looking for a sweet spot of about 155 because in between 142 and like 163 is when your amylase is most active. Above that, it inoculates it, and below that, it's not active. So we want to make sure we stay within that range. For how long? Yep, 60 to 90 minutes. Now, most of your conversion will take place in the first 30 to 45 minutes. But um, I, I got plenty of stuff to do around here, and I always like to leave it for 90 minutes, somewhere around 90 minutes, uh, and then we'll go back and check on it. So what you'll find is, and you'll see this, it'll be a real thick porridge, and then as it starts to convert, it gets real soupy, real thin, and it liquefies. That's the first indication. Um, okay, we're at 156. I can start slowly adding the corn and I know that the temperature is going to drop 157. I'm going to give it a few more minutes. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're at, we're at 165 now. I'm going to start to add this corn. I'm going to keep an eye on this temperature. No, I'm at 163. So we're going to start to add this corn slowly. And I anticipate dropping a few degrees. Yeah. And then we'll give it a stir. We will add some more. Whoa, 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 I, I think I'm adding a little bit too fast there. Oh, no, okay, I'm good. What you don't want it to do is you don't want it to clump up. There, there we go. Yeah, you can feel it if it clumps up. If it does, you just beat it. You see, now we're down to 159. Now we'll add some more corn. Now, could I have checked the pH and adjusted the pH while doing this? Yeah, certainly I could have, but what... I mean, it's, to me, it's just an added step. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, but I know that the grain that I add to this is going to affect the pH. And we're going we're gonna to adjust it. When we're finished all of this and we cool it, we're going we're gonna to adjust the pH to 5.2. Um, if I started off at 5.2, uh, yeah, it'd probably be closer to 5.2, you know, my final adjustment. But I'm not that concerned about pH for the gelatinization process and the sacrification, which is converting starches to fermentable sugars. Um, my concern about pH is when I'm fermenting. I need to have the proper environment. Remember, we always talked about it. We talked about temperature, environment, pH, um, and all those things. 
So that's when it's most important is when, there we go, is uh, when we're getting ready to ferment, we want to make sure that we've got the proper pH. Okay, I'm at 156. You see, it's, it, it puts me right in the, right in the, right in the category. So, uh, now I'm going to add my two-row barley. And remember, we're adding three pounds of two-row barley. So what uh, did we already decide that we're going to need, uh, since I'm using the original recipe, uh, we're going to need some uh, amylase. And this two-row barley, you can, it, doesn't, it does not clump as readily as flake corn does. So. There's my two-row barley. I get that all mixed in there. And we're at 154. Ha! Ah, perfect. Perfect. Uh, what I'll do with this now is I'll add my amylase. And we already discussed that. Yeah, this is, we're gonna, I'm going to put about two teaspoons in here. Um, here's the question. How much is too much amylase? Well, you stop and think about it. Let's say I was using six row. And if I was using six row barley, I'd have plenty of enzymatic action. I'd have plenty of diastatic power. So there, there would be an excess. And that excess doesn't have any effect on it. Uh, the only real effect of diastatic powers when you don't have enough. So uh, can you, oh, I guess you could overdo it, um, but there's no real danger. It's like the only real danger when it comes to pitching yeast is under pitching, because then it takes for God forever. Uh, it's kind of hard to over pitch. You know, it's like put too much in. Let me grab this. one teaspoon and we're going to put about two of them in there and I just sprinkle it across the top two teaspoons and we will let that we're going to mix that and let that get happy And I'll use the latter portion of my runoff as a sparge to rinse all those fermentable sugars out. Now, it's turned off. I'll place the lid back on it. It's at 153.6. And I'll just leave that set there for 60 to 90 minutes. And uh, when I come back, we'll go to the next step. Okay. So I've been watching TV, kind of chilling out. You know, it's been about two hours, two and a half hours almost, really. Uh, so I've let this sit. I've pulled the top off. I'm down to 130 degrees. Um, and you can see this in here. Um, let's get a close-up. There. See, you can actually see how loose and liquefied it is. And it's no longer that sticky mess that it was in the very beginning. That's the first indication. Now the second indication that I've had a good conversion is actually uh, the way it tasted. It tastes sweet. Um, but what I want to really make sure now is I want to chemically test it to make sure that I've converted all the starches to fermentable sugars or as much as possible. So let me get Yep, you know the routine. This is the iodine test. Uh, get me a spoonful of this liquid. And if I come up here and I show you this, I'm going to drop this, a drop of iodine in here. And you'll notice how it dissipates almost immediately and it just turns a brown color. Now, had there been any starches in there, that would be dark charcoal black so sort of like the three checks uh, we're well on our way and I'm at 127 now so I'll allow that to cool some more when it gets down to what yeah below 190 uh, somewhere around that neighborhood I'll start to transfer it into my fermenter and then what are we gonna do <laughs> you got it we're gonna adjust the pH before we pitch yeast well, there it is, transferred. Uh, wow, what a mess. 
but I got her transferred. I'm at 111 degrees and I'm waiting. Yeah, what a mess. Uh, that flake corn, um, it, now I'm starting to recall why I don't use it as often. Um, yeah, it can be pretty messy. But it's, it's always manageable. I mean, you've got to find a way to work your way through it. Uh, in fact, some of that flake corn made its way through my false bottom and clogged up my spout. So I had to wind up dipping it out and straining it. And uh, it, was, it was a labor of love, I'll tell you. So I've got it here. Uh, I've adjusted the pH, and just as I suspected, the grains dropped the pH. When I first tested it, it was like 6.4, uh, so I only had to drop it just a little bit. So I used a little bit less than a teaspoon of citric acid and dropped it down to 5.14. A little bit low, but that's okay. I can live with that. Um, and next, I'll wait for it to get down to below 90 degrees. I'm still at 111. Uh, once it gets below 90 degrees, I'll pitch my yeast, and what I use for yeast is Daddy Distiller's Active Dry Yeast by Red Star. Uh, it's just my go-to yeast, use it all the time. But I make my own turbo, uh-huh, we've talked about this before. I use Fermax Yeast Nutrient, and the recipe, or the mixture for that, is two heaping tablespoons of Fermax Yeast Nutrient, to one heaping tablespoon of distiller's active dry yeast. And then of course I'll put that over there and I got a space left out for it so it'll sit for the next seven to ten days uh, in my temporary fermentation chamber that's lit and controlled by the PID and I'll allow that to ferment and we'll be back at the end of that. Uh, that brings us to this point. Happy distilling.